screen visible to everyone yes, yes we can see yes yes uh, so food care is a very essential part of self management in diabetes in our patients as uh, improper food care can be i'm sorry i'm having a difficulty to change yes so as we see in this picture so every single patient whom we see in our opd with diabetes this may be the future of them when an improper food food care is there so food care is an essential part of self management of, of diabetes in every patients as an improper food care can cause a risk of losing their feet and losing life as well so as we all know diabetes is a leading cause of non traumatic lower limb amputations and over a period of time when patients have uncontrolled diabetes it might lead to peripheral neuropathy and in duration of time with increased pressure to the feet with loss of protective sensation causing injuries and these injuries can cause ulcers which are non healing for a long time might get infected ischemic and further leading to amputations and associated complications with death so all we with this burden in here at the department of endocrinology and diabetes we work as a team of endocrine physicians pmr physicians prosthetic and orthotic technicians vascular surgeons physiotherapists and diabetes educators in handling patients with diabetes and foot associated problems to prevent foot care issues so foot care can make a lot of difference between saving a foot or losing a foot and life so it is our responsibility as nurses as we see every single patient in our opd with diabetes either it is newly diagnosed or they've been having diabetes on a long term it is important for us to teach these simple steps in foot care to our patients that is to check wash and dry their feet regularly use appropriate moisturizers protect their feet and regular follow ups so a simple foot examination as a basic for every single patient whom we see has to be taught which they can perform by themselves on a routine every day a foot inspection should cover the whole area including the dorsum of the feet the sole the heel and the nails and interdigital space so what can we look for we look for any obvious deformities as we inspect the feet look for any swelling any blisters that are there any nails that are in growing and pricking through the skin any prominent veins any obvious color changes any callosities or corn any thickening of skin under the feet any skin breakdowns any fissures or an ulcer that is not healing a long time a sore or any discharge from the ulcers that are present so our patients can be advised to use a small mirror as we say in this picture to just look at the dorsum of their feet and the plantar aspect to see if they are having any obvious deformities so there are some areas which we have to look at when we teach our patients with a high risk of having ulcers so as we see in this picture the prominent pressure points and for patients who have obvious foot deformities such as a uh, low arch feet or a high arch feet the pressure areas and the interdigital pressure increases with inappropriate footwear which might cause toe deformities and there is a risk of foot ulcers over these areas so the majority of foot ulcers occur over the toes on on the metatarsal heads as a pressure points and as we see these are some of our patients who have been suffering with such ulcers and has been he non healing for a long time so as we see here in this picture so this is a toe ring one of our patient is wearing and this is a very common culture back here in india so every patient a married woman you see they'll be wearing a toe ring what happens ultimately is that when they don't concentrate on this much and the feet gets swollen or the toe gets swollen in a peak of time it might get cause an ulcer which is non healing and might lead to amputations so advise every patient who wears a toe ring uh, some patients may not be willing to do that but it is important that we tell our patients to either wear a loose ring or remove the toe rings to prevent ulcers so uh, appropriate footwear can make a major change in the patient's foot so if the footwear is too tight or if it's too loose and if it doesn't accommodate the feet well it can cause obvious foot deformities at, such as a hallux valgus and ulcers over the toes which can cause a non healing ulcer and amputations so this is a t strap footwear which is again a very common footwear worn by most of our patients on a very long period of time patients who are having loss of protective sensation to their feet who do not feel a footwear in their Uh, legs they try to hold these footwear every time and as we see we see a lot of pressure over these areas over the toes which ultimately causes ulcers over these areas and causes toe deformities such as hammer toes mallet toes and claw toes leading to ulcers so again cross leg sitting is a very common practice here uh, in our country so what happens ultimately is when patients sit on a long time with their legs crossed they might have developed ulcers over the 
the lateral malleolus, which might be unhealing. And this takes a very long time to heal. So we advise our patients not to sit cross leg and use a chair. And if patients are at work where they have to be sitting on a long term folding their legs, they can be advised to use a small padded cushion or a sheet folded to prevent ulcer over the malleolus. So regular washing of the feet, like just how we take care of our face. So advise our patients to wash the feet every day with soap and water, dry them carefully between the toes, for dry skin patients uh, who, uh, who suffer dry, dry skin because of neuropathy, it is good for them to soak their feet 15 to 20 minutes in lukewarm water and use a nylon scrubber to scrub the hard areas to remove any debris. So use of moisturizers every day is advisable. Again, when we suggest our patients to use moisturizers, it is really important for us to know where the locality of the patient is. We had history of patients who have been using coconut oil as moisturizers and they've had landed up in rat bites and ant bites and with ulcers to us. So it is really important for us to advise our patients to use appropriate moisturizers to prevent dryness of the skin. And trimming of the nails, again, is a common practice for people to use blades. So we advise patients to trim their nails with nail cutters in, in order to prevent injuries. And, and trimming of the nails should be straight and not across to prevent ingrowing pronails. So interdigital space uh, hygiene, again, is a very common concern as fungal infection is very common in patients with diabetes. So teach our patients to examine between their toes to see if there are any obvious fungal infections. Keep the area dry and clean by cleaning the area after washing the feet with a dry cloth. Use antifungal treatment if at all it is necessary, if there is an obvious fungal infection is present. And use a wider toe box shoe so that the uh, pressure over the toes, like the toes are not crushed into the footwear, which might cause two fungal infections. So patients must be taught to avoid barefoot walking as the loss of protective sensation is there. Patients might land up having small injuries which may not heal in time leading to ulcers. A proper fitting socks, preferably cotton socks, in order to make sure that the socks is breathable and it's not too tight or loose causing blood circulation, impaired blood circulation to the feet and avoid wearing T footwear and an ideal footwear must have a proper back strap and an MCR footwear is advisable for patients with diabetes. So apart from this, a good glycemic control contributes to prevention of foot ulcers. So our patients can be taught the simple uh, uh, monitoring of their blood sugars can be remembered as A, B and C. A is to monitor the HbA1c every three months, which has to be less than seven, maintain a blood pressure of less than 130 by 80, and have a complete screening for their complications for any early foot problems or problems in their eyes and kidneys. So a simple clinical foot examination to all our patients who come to our OPD is mandatory in order to early identify foot problems in patients and prevent foot ulcers. So this might include uh, just a two to five minutes of simple inspection of the feet to see if there are any obvious deformities, palpation of the peripheral pulses, and an objective examination using certain tools and instruments. So a monofilament, these are like uh, nylon filaments which are used to assess the loss of protective sensation. They are available as 2 grams, 4 grams, and 10 grams. And these are the areas recommended to test these monofilaments. So any person is sent to have a loss of protect, complete loss of protective sensation if they are not able to perceive a 10 gram monofilament. So a biasesiometer is similar to that of a tuning fork that we use. This is used to assess the vibration perception threshold. So this helps us to quantify the amount of vibration perception that the patient has. It is said to be normal if the patient is able to perceive a vibration session of less than 15, and it's considered mild when it is 15 to 25, and we consider it severe when it is more than 40. So again, a durometer is an instrument that is used to test the shore value of the footwear the patient wears. So the hardness of the footwear always matters because this again gives a counter pressure to the leg causing foot ulcers. So an ideal shore value of a footwear should be between 8 to 15 and a recommended footwear is a MCR footwear with a soft sole. So uh, here at the Department of Endocrinology, Diabetes and Metabolism, training is given to healthcare professionals in the area of foot care where they are trained to do minor procedures such as callosity removals, corn removals and teach our patients on foot care related aspects. Here you see one of our nurses doing a foot care procedure and the aspects of offloading in integration with the PMR department is being addressed to our patients to prevent foot ulcers. So as we all agree that prevention is always better than cure. A thorough education on foot care to all our patients who come to the OPD, may it be a new patient or a patient who's on a regular follow-up and a regular 
uh, follow up of these patients doing a uh, proper foot assessment might improve their compliance leading to prevention of foot ulcers so uh, i want to thank you all for your patient attendance any clarifications doubts <laughs>